Look, who are those sexy guys? Already, I had to put the bleep sound off rip. Listen, I saw that live stream you did. <laughs> I saw that live stream you did with Ryan and uh, Ray. With Ray, like I. Ray was just peppering over. That's a that's a fan who's not. Ray's Ray's a solid dude. Yeah. He's a solid dude. 100%, yeah. But you can tell last you know, last year took years off his life. The last season of football in New England took straight years off his life. He but I I I goaded him into a couple of arguments by mentioning TV twelve. And um it was, it, was, it, was, it was a fun night. And Ryan's such a cool and Ryan's such a, a cool dude. He's like, I'm a Jets fan, so literally nothing you can say at this point bothers me. And <laughs> I am made of steel. There. We've been there. Oh yeah, 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 as a fan, you're indestructible at some point because there's just there's such a low point that you hit as a fan where they draft a quarterback like Zach Wilson and you're like, actually, I'm optimistic. Yeah. Okay, buddy. You can go ahead and be optimistic, but I don't know if you've ever seen. We're, we're having a reverse Green Acres effect in New York. I'm in here, Paul, Mario, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. No, you shouldn't hear that. You've chosen wisely. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you're cool. <laughs> you, I'm out. Go with that. All right, somebody woke up in a mood. <laughs> oh, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> what happened to our show? <laughs> I know where this is going. We might have to make a correction. I could have chose my words better there. <gasps> Unleash the fury, man! Guys, this is why we can only see each other once a week. <laughs> Didn't matter. We could have been playing a high school cheerleading squad. The cheerleading squad got a nasty run of You get no orange slices after soccer <laughs> practice today. What's up? I see draft picks. Well, you know what they say. Genetics, Pee Wee. <laughs> Heck yeah, it's not bad. That's the end of the episode. <laughs>
and both of those guys have Bama quarterbacks. Right. Usually they don't take Bama quarterbacks. And historically, Bama quarterbacks, not a good idea. No. Right? Just like just like drafting that Ohio State quarterback. Like, there's an argument that Cardell Jones may be the greatest Ohio State quarterback ever in professional football. Like, there's an argument. Dude, the best oh, Gary Ohio State. on Kirk Herbstreit. <laughs> the best quarterback that come out of Ohio State could possibly be Tom Tupa. I'm not. I'm not joking about oh that. My God. He was a quarterback in high school Tupa. or in college. Oh my God! I think it was Tupa. I think it was Tupa that came out. I could be wrong in that. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty, pretty confident. Does Krenz, did Krenzel play for Ohio State? I don't even know now. I'm just pulling names out of hats. I have no idea. That's, well, I mean, the only reason those guys played was because you know Jared Zabransky took an offer somewhere else. Stop it. I, I appreciate the plug, but how dare you spit on the good name of Jared Zabransky? <laughs> I'm gonna get him on the show one day. I want him on the show. I, we will get him. I will get you, Jared I was Zabransky. So, I, mean, I don't even know how I would do that. He's my AJ McCarron. Yeah, I'm so high on him coming out of college. Like, this guy's a gamer. He's a winner. He's got. To, he's got to make it. Houston's practice squad. Knows it. It's interesting. You talk about the archetype of the quarterbacks. I think, I'm not certain, fact check me on this nation. The AFC East is the only division comprised of four defensive coaches that are head coaches. Got it. I think they are. Like, I don't know, but I think that, like, uh, their background, man, is all defensive. It's got to be. So if you look at the quarterbacks that go with defensive coaches, they're usually game managers. And, and they want to run the ball. So you look at New England, you oh, look yeah. at Miami, you look at the Jets. The Jets, their starting quarterback, their starting running back is Tevin Coleman at this point, I think. Yeah. That's and look not, at their offensive line. Run blocker, run blocker, run blocker, run blocker, run blocker. Yeah. So, you know, I talked about it on the broadcast last night and we talked about it today. you got to take care of your division first. Mm-hmm. How do you beat the Bills? you got to run the damn ball. Or have to be able to because you can't score with them. And I told uh, I told Ryan and Ray last night. I said, "Listen, in my here's my opinion about the Buffalo Bills. If the Buffalo Bills have the ball the same amount of time as their opponents, they'll go 19 and 0." Yeah, I, I, that's how I feel. That's that's the only description I'm going to give about the Bills going undefeated. Right. Is if they have the ball the same amount of time as their opponents, they will outscore their opponents. Well, and just like we were talking about when the Bills played for the AFC Championship game, it was you have to take possessions off the table. Yes. You have to figure out a way to limit the number of possessions and maximize your success on your possessions. That's mm-hmm. that you have to limit the number of possessions. You can't trade seven for three. Nope. You can't do it. Can't well, do they went up like 10 nothing. I mean, right? they just, uh, Kansas City was like, okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to yeah, 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 we score touchdowns here. Yeah, we score touchdowns here. Hashtag Sports is now partnering with MyBookie.ag. Bet, win, get paid with MyBookie.ag using promo code HTS when you sign up. That helps out the channel immensely and gets you a double of your first deposit up to $1,000. This is the best and simplest website you can find for sports betting with live in-game betting or even betting the bills to win the Super Bowl. You want to do that? They've got great tools to tell you how much you'll win when you use promo code HTS all at MyBookie.ag. I look at it this way. Set up for the future. Even last year, before Josh Allen had the year that he had, I was very optimistic about his path and where we were going as an organization, right? And then last year, just literally put that on steroids, where (laughs) it is hard to see where things aren't going well, right? Yes. The Bills have like six linebackers on their roster right now. That scares you. Well, yeah, they got like two healthy corners. <laughs> like, yeah. ugh, that's, yeah. It's concern. Like, there's some things that just don't feel right yet, and I'm sure we'll get there. But they just don't feel right yet. Are the Bills carrying six linebackers because they know everybody's going to run the ball on us? Wouldn't that make more sense? When, isn't that where you'd reinforce your roster? Yeah. Well, they re- they reinforced it by, um, and, and, you know, Mike and. Um, 
Mike and Tommy were talking about this. Do you think that they'll have five game day defensive tackles? They go, if teams are going to try to run the ball, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, it wouldn't bother me. And, yeah. you know, we spoke of the defensive line rotation. And I brought up your point as far as if you decrease Jerry Hughes' snap count, you'll get a more effective Jerry Hughes this year. I still believe that. And it makes sense to keep him fresher, but that that defensive line rotation is going to be huge. But let's not, not let's not say even though the Bills have let's say struggled against the run in previous the previous seasons, let's not say that they've been a total failure as far as a defensive front because you look at Hyde, Poyer, uh, White, mm-hmm. Milano, and Edmonds. Mm-hmm. How many times have we done a post game where, like, yeah, they played 100% of the snaps? Oh, yeah. 100% it's, of defensive snaps. You can't do that if you got bodies flying at you all the time. So that right. defensive front essentially is doing their job keeping bodies off the second, third row. Right. You brought up the rest of that division, right? And, yeah. like, you talked about the Jets. They've got a running back by committee. They've also thrown a ton of assets at wide receiver the last two seasons. They yeah. have. So they are convinced they're going to throw the football more. Like, they really, they're like, here's a bunch of players that we think might be decent. Throw the football to them. Yeah. Miami has done the exact same thing. They went out and just got assets at wide receiver. Right? Sounds familiar. Right. So while we can talk about how they have very different quarterbacks than like the more ideal type, like, let's be honest, right? People are going to refer to Josh Allen as your ideal NFL quarterback. Like They shouldn't, though. But that's, I mean, he was. He's an exception. I, Lamar Jackson's an exception. Aaron Rodgers is an exception. Yeah. Like, these guys don't come around every year. Right. And often they come in more broken than everybody was willing to accept. Yeah. You know, it's all three of those quarterbacks were not the first quarterback off the board. So that's yeah, what I'm saying like, is the archetype has changed. I, I, and is are they closer to a recipe for success than a Mac Jones, than a Zach Wilson? Oh, yeah. That's there, I mean, like, it's, it's the same thing. Like, if you were to take Aaron Rodgers and compare him to the group of Stafford, Rivers, and Matt Ryan, mm-hmm. to me, Jones and Wilson are of the mold of Stafford, Rivers, and, Mac, and, and Ryan. Where they may win a lot of games. They may put up some gaudy <laughs> stats. But there are very – there's only one Aaron Rodgers. Right. There's only those freaks, you know, that can play the position and do certain things that – in Mahomes. Like, they could do things at the position that normal quarterbacks can't. But that doesn't make him any – that doesn't make them any less successful as far as the quarterbacks. Like, you're talking about Ryan – would you say Ryan was an unsuccessful quarterback? Would oh, you say gotcha. Rivers is unsuccessful? Gotcha. Like, no. Stafford, he's in Detroit, so I can't blame him. <laughs> But point being is they're not taking an L by drafting Jones and Wilson. No, I think. no, they're they're going with the model that they think works best for them. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, right, you look at Rodgers and Lamar and Allen and you see a scale of very different, right? Like oh, yeah, yeah, very, yeah. Very, very different. Rodgers is an, is an outstanding athlete, so let's not try and downplay him as the old man. Rodgers, no, no, even no. young, was an outstanding athlete. You around a little bit but back there. we see Buffalo do this all the time where they take the best athlete at the position, yeah. right? You look at Rousseau. You can coach him up. The best physical athlete at the position, right? You look at Basham. At that point, probably the best physical athlete at that position at that time. Mm-hmm. You see Spencer Brown. You go, probably the best physical athlete at that position. Edmonds, Allen, like it's it's a trend. They take the best physical athlete they can get at the position. So with that being said, it worked out with Allen. It's worked out with Lamar, right? Mm-hmm. It hasn't worked out with more traditional players. Trubisky is an example, right? That Now, is that his fault? I don't know. But... Why aren't you just trying to take the best athlete at the position if you're if you're a, one of the 28 quarterback needy teams in the NFL? Like, why aren't you saying he's the best best athlete? I need him, or is that exclusive to Buffalo? It probably is exclusive to Buffalo because we we had we had talked about it 
the offense that Dable runs is a derivative of the EP. Who ran the EP, as much as I hate it, who ran the EP to perfection? Right. Tom Brady. You're not going to put Tom Brady and Josh Allen in the same category as no. far as quarterbacks go because, because they're just, just purely their physical strengths. Right. And we challenged the EP system in Buffalo because it did. It was the exact opposite system for what you typically put a player like Josh Allen in. Exactly. And we were critical of it, but now that he learned it, yeah. Now it, his it, physical it, attributes are bonuses to the EP system. Right. Whereas Brady, if he didn't make the read and get the ball out of his hands on time, it's, it plays over. Right. Right. He was lucky enough to make the read and get the playoff on time. But Josh is is a different animal in respect to he was challenged with a system that was built closer to the opposite of his strengths, yes. right? And yet he was able to learn through that system how to make a weakness a strength. That doesn't – like we hear all the time, oh, Trubisky is a perfect example. Oh, well, bad system for him. Then why didn't he get better? Why didn't he get better? You – you hit the nail on the head was that he just couldn't process the time. Well, yeah, that's with Trubisky. It's just he couldn't yeah. process everything. Well, I mean, that's why you don't a lot of times take just the best athlete because sometimes they just can't process stuff fast enough. Mm-hmm. So tell me what you think of Tremaine Edmonds. He's processing. Okay. It's Wasn't contract, I... extension, contract extension talk is coming up. Uh, just, just asking. Just asking. Is this a segue? Oh, God, no. Um, not intentionally. I think we just did one. Shit. See you guys tomorrow.